In 1960, one of the most tragic disasters in the history of space exploration occurred. An explosion at the Baikonur Cosmodrome claimed the lives of about a hundred people. The Soviet authorities classified everything related to it. So, in this video, I want to tell you about this catastrophe and other terrible incidents related to the conquest of space. X-15 and Soyuz-1 were two significant missions in the history of the space era, which unfortunately ended in disasters. One could argue whether the X-15 project is part of the space program, since it's a hypersonic aircraft, not a rocket. But then you decide. Gagarin's spaceflight occurred at an altitude of 99 miles. Officially, the airspace of the States ends at the Kaman line at 62 miles, because space begins at this altitude. According to US standards, space starts at an altitude of 80 kilometers. The Earth's atmosphere ends at an altitude of 1,864 miles. So, what do you consider a space? The X-15 was an experimental hypersonic aircraft developed in the USA in the 1950s by North American. The first flights began in 1959. This aircraft made 199 flights at speeds over 7 Mach. It flew at an altitude above 62 miles. Interestingly, Neil Armstrong, who later landed on the Moon, flew this plane from 1960 to 1962. There was only one fatal crash during all these flights. It was the 191st flight on November 15, 1967. For pilot Michael James Adams, this was his seventh flight on X-15, so he already had experience controlling this apparatus. But during the ascent, the plane went into a hypersonic spin. Adams didn't understand how to regain control of the machine at such speed, as there was no instructions for this. He desperately struggled with the machine and, after some time, managed to regain control of the aircraft. However, for unknown reasons, the plane disintegrated in the air. And Soyuz 1 was not an airplane, but the first manned spacecraft. Please do not confuse it with the first human flight, as Gagarin was launched as a dummy, meaning a dog or a monkey could have been in his place. Nothing would have changed. So, Vladimir Mikhailovich Komarov was the first Soviet cosmonaut to control a manned spacecraft. The plan was for the ship to orbit, followed by the launch of the second ship, Soyuz 2. There was to be the first ever docking in the world. But due to problems at the start with Soyuz 1, this plan was cancelled. As soon as Soyuz 1 entered orbit, it immediately began to have problems. One of the solar panel areas did not deploy. Therefore, the ship began to experience a lack of electric power. Eventually, they decided to end the flight permanently. On the 19th orbit around the Earth, the ship descended from orbit. Komarov controlling the ship did everything correctly, strictly according to instructions. But already after entering the dense layers of the atmosphere at an altitude of 4.3 miles, the drogue parachute failed to pull the main parachute out of the tray. And at an altitude of 0.93 miles, the backup parachute didn't work because its straps got entangled around the undischarged drogue parachute of the main system. In the end, the apparatus crashed to the ground at a speed of 112 miles per hour and caught fire. But the cosmonaut died instantly from the impact even before the fire. Just imagine his state a second before death. His parachute system failed twice. We live in an amazing times. In the past, only entire states could afford to conquer space. But today, private companies are engaged in this. Virgin Galactic, founded by billionaire Richard Branson, plans to conduct commercial space flights. On July 11, 2021, the spacecraft VSS Unity already made its first commercial flight, with the company owner Branson among the six passengers on board. Today, about 600 people have paid for a ticket and are in line for flights. But first, everything needs to be checked. So there are tests after tests. And one of these tests ended badly. On October 31, 2014, the spacecraft VSS Enterprise crashed during a flight. The tragedy was caused by an error of the co-pilot. Due to overloads, he became nervous and unlocked the tail fin, switching it to the braking position prematurely. This is categorically prohibited during acceleration, but the company fully relied on the professionalism of the pilots, not considering the psychological factor. As a result of the overloads, the spacecraft fell apart in flight. The commander ejected, but his assistant died. The surviving pilot said that he lost consciousness twice. The first time was due to overloads, and the second time due to a lack of air. He didn't have time to activate the emergency oxygen system. He regained consciousness from the jerk of the parachute and managed to land safely. Again touching on the military theme. This time, on March 18, 1980, at the Placetsk Cosmodrome, they planned to launch a military satellite. 
but in the Vostok 2M rocket, which was to put the satellite into orbit, there was a fuel leak. This resulted in a powerful explosion, followed by four more explosions and again human casualties. Why do people die again during rocket launches? This time 48 people died. Among them were many conscript soldiers who stood around the perimeter guarding the launch site. They were burned alive. An investigation showed that the cause was the use of catalytically active materials in the manufacture of hydrogen peroxide filters, but this was determined only in 1996 by a reinvestigation commission, which rehabilitated the personnel of the Cosmodrome's combat unit. Initially, everything was blamed on them. The Chinese Sichuan Cosmodrome has been operational since 1984. Its construction began in 1967, but in 1972, funding for the project was halted due to a political purge of scientists. Construction resumed only 10 years later and was completed in 1984. The first rocket launch took place in the same year. Of course, China also had its share of tragedies. On February 14, 1996, a Chenjing 3B rocket with a satellite on board started and fell onto a village 22 seconds into its flight. The exact number of deaths in the village is still unknown. Chinese authorities reported six deaths and 57 injuries. Various Western sources disagree with this, believing that there were more victims. The cause of the tragedy was a failure of the electronics in the flight control system. 2,263 years ago, the Greek scientist Eratosthenes of Cyrene first calculated the Earth's radius. His calculations showed it to be 3,907 miles, which is not much different from the modern data of 3,959 miles. That is, without rockets and satellites, people did not doubt that the Earth is round. So what happened to our contemporaries? 64-year-old Mike Hughes was one of the flat Earthers. Instead of climbing a mountain or flying on a plane, he wanted to build his own rocket to fly on it and prove to everyone that the Earth is flat. Note that his rocket was supposed to rise to an altitude of 0.95 miles. There are many mountains higher than that. He spent $18,000 on this project. What could go wrong with such a budget? In this video, we see how his steam-powered rocket took off and lost its parachute at the very beginning. But who stopped him from wearing a parachute personally? He could have asked any glider pilot about the safety system, and they would have told him that they always wear special compact parachutes. Even more, they could have taken him to an altitude higher than 2.49 miles, where he could have safely admired the earthly beauties. This is what happens when you don't study well in school. Apollo 1 This tragedy occurred on January 27, 1967, during a test stage. What's most horrific is that it all happened on the ground, where theoretically help was available in case of failure. A launch simulation of the spacecraft was conducted and high concentration oxygen was fed inside. However, a fire broke out suddenly and the oxygen intensified the effect dramatically. Everything happened very quickly. As a result, all three crew members, Virgil Grissom, Edward White and Roger Chaffee, burned alive. It was a terrible death, something you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. But what caused the tragedy? The Apollo series spacecraft used pure oxygen at low pressure instead of normal air because it was lighter and more convenient for space travel. However, on the ground and during training, the oxygen pressure was increased, making some materials highly flammable. NASA didn't want to replace this gas with a nitrogen mixture because it was considered safe and simple. Most likely, the fire started due to a spark or short circuit in the wiring. The commission investigating the accident found several places in the spacecraft where this could have happened. As soon as the fire started, it quickly spread and damaged the astronauts' spacesuits. The complex hatch and its locks prevented the crew from opening it quickly from the inside. The commission stated that the astronauts died from inhaling smoke within 14 seconds of the fire starting. Soyuz 11 was the last spacecraft in the Soyuz mission. The launch on June 6, 1971 went as planned. The crew of three set a world record for the longest human spaceflight, spending 23 days on board the station. On June 30, 1971, during their return to Earth, an air leak occurred. The cosmonauts simply suffocated. It's terrifying to imagine how your consciousness gradually fades due to the lack of oxygen. This was the first time in history that people died in space. After this incident, it became mandatory to wear spacesuits during launch and landing. So they would have definitely survived if this rule had been introduced earlier. So many people worked on the project and no one thought of such a simple solution. The tragedy occurred due to a technical malfunction in the spacecraft's descent module detachment system. Challenger disaster In this disaster, 
All seven crew members remained alive until the very end. On January 28, 1986, at an altitude of 8.7 miles and 73 seconds into the flight, the left booster of the Space Shuttle Challenger detached from one of its two attachments. It pierced the main fuel tank, causing an explosion. As a result of the explosion, the cabin with the pilots was turned off. The crew members were conscious and even managed to activate their personal air supply devices. They died from the impact with the water after falling from a height of 12.4 miles. Among the crew members was a regular school teacher, Krista McAuliffe, who won a national contest to fly into space. This is how chance can sometimes affect a person's fate. The catastrophe was videotaped and watched by a huge number of viewers. Even the commentator didn't immediately realize that a tragedy had occurred. All observers hoped that the situation could be rectified. Columbia disaster. Again, a disaster occurred during the return to Earth, but the tragedy had been predetermined at the launch stage, although nobody knew about it. Actually, that's not entirely true. Engineers suspected that the insulation might have been damaged and insisted on a visual inspection by astronauts of the damaged site. NASA management denied this request. They were also denied access to data from the military. Personally, I can't understand why the management showed such indifference. The issue was that during the launch, a piece of solid insulation material broke off the fuel tank and damaged the ceramic heat shield on the shuttle's wing. As a result, on February 1, 2003, during the return to Earth, part of the shuttle's wing couldn't withstand the high temperatures and the spacecraft completely disintegrated in the air at an altitude of 39 miles. Seven astronauts died. This event led to a suspension of shuttle flights for two whole years. Space exploration has always been accompanied by danger. But with technological advancements, these flights are becoming safer and safer. We're not far from a future where ordinary people will be able to fly into space, just as they do on airplanes today. That's all for now. Bye-bye.